hear this whatever you fear was not meant to happen but you granted it permission to happen whatever you fear is not meant to happen but you granted it permission to happen every first daughter in my family always find it difficult to get married it happens to all your uncles now you are the first daughter who told you that the same thing will happen to you so because you are the first daughter and you are now 25 or 28 or even 30 <laughs> and all the guys that have been coming around they are the guys with this kind of trousers they are putting their jeans here you know those kind of guys hey, yo man how are you alpha on serious they sack their trousers and they come you say i'm a i'm a believer i'm a christian and then so you are not living and you know to make the matter worse the place uh, all the places you have been going to the prayer houses they've been giving you prophecies in that light remember in your family some people are after you they're after your marital destiny hey? so oh lord how are they that have, what that trouble me many are they that rise up against me many there be who see of my soul there is no hell for me in god oh and you start quoting psalm 3 you are quoting the scripture not because you have faith but in fear and can i tell you this god is only pleased by faith so those things you are afraid of were never meant to happen they happen because you are not there peace like rivers part two that's what can we be seated briefly let's be seated and we pray peace like rivers part two peace like rivers peace like rivers um you see one of the reasons why it is expedient for us to um do this teaching this morning is basically because prophetically speaking we are entering the new year and the year had accumulated challenges that's the truth we are in a very critical season according to the bible prophecy and it is only someone who is not sensitive or not conversant with god's word that will be caught unaware as regards some of the things that will be happening this season jesus told us in matthew 24 that there will be rumors of war and there will be war and we are beginning to see all of that and in the coming year we are going to have more you know i once told you that i'm going to be sharing with us in details the nations that will be fighting nations the country that will be fighting each other and that we need to watch out for in the place of prayer does that mean that jesus is coming now all right what i will say is that you've got to be prepared as god's kids do you understand you have to be prepared you have to be prepared this is the most sensitive season in the history of mankind very sensitive a lot of things are happening very fast and a lot of things will keep happening very fast that is the truth and that's why if you're a believer make sure you hold your faith tight this is not the time to be doing church this is the time to be a christian indeed this is not the time to be one leg in one leg out this is the time to be serious about your spiritual life this is the time to really know what one is doing do you understand so you've got to know what you are doing and as you are entering the coming year make sure that what thing that must be your topmost priority your should be your spiritual life my spiritual life my prayer life do you understand my study life I want to be closer to God and I want to be closer to God's word. Let that be your heart desire even as we enter the new year. Praise God. Because the truth is, it's not going to be funny. Many people will back out. Some people will be frustrated. 
I tell you the truth, I lie not. And there is going to be a separation. And a, a, a separation. Alright? We see in clarity those who are serving the Lord and those who are not. It will be clear. So that's why I'm saying that it is expedient for you to be serious with your spiritual life. Praise the Lord. Peace like rivers. Why is peace so important? I've taught us in part one, all right, that of course peace is gotten in salvation in Christ. Are you getting my point? I went further to explain. If you haven't, uh, if you are not in church, the day I, I, um, that topic was treated, I would advise that you go to our Telegram channel and download the message, okay? Peace like rivers. So, peace, because that is the foundation for peace. There is no other foundation and there is no other alternative to peace than salvation in Christ Jesus. Money cannot give peace. Money can give joy. Money can give happiness. Are you getting my point? But not peace, not joy. That's why the Bible talks about joy. It says, with joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. There is a way, jo joy is a supply of the Spirit. It's the Holy Ghost that supplies it. Alright? It's, it's not gotten by material things. It's not a physical, you know, um, 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 it's not driven by physical possessions or by physical um, things. Praise God. But happiness is, somebody can be happy and still commit suicide. I hope you know that. Somebody can be happy and still be depressed. That's why some folks, after attending comedy show, they laugh temporarily, right? And then, by the time they are leaving that same venue, before they even leave the venue, they return back to their shell. What shell? Depression. So the only place where joy and peace is guaranteed is in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That's why those who centered all their hope around all right, physical things, they are of home of almost men, the most miserable. Because when those things are taken away from them, what become of their life? They start considering what? Suicide. They start considering all manner of things. Do you understand? But as God's kids, our hope is not anchored, you know, on these things. Even though we are going to have them in abundance. I hope you know you are, we are going to have them in abundance. Yes, I hope you know that. Yes, you will build the houses. Yes, you will yes, buy the cars. Yes. You know, you will travel to all, all those countries. You will travel there. Yes. You will go on vacation. Yes. You, you are not going there to be washing toilets. Yes. <laughs> you, are, <laughs> you are not going there to be, to be, you know, taking care of old women. To be doing any pack, you know, packing old women poo poo, no, no, no. as some people do that. <laughs> okay, you are going there as a multi-millionaire, yeah. going there with your own money on vacation. You know, lodge yeah. yourself in their five-star hotel. If it is New York City, if it is Texas, if it is, do you understand? Yeah. Five-star hotel, you lodge there. Okay, you take care, you return back with your family, and you keep making your millions of dollars. I am speaking to someone this morning. I am speaking to somebody this morning. Praise God. So, there are two kinds of laws that is um, functional in the world. And mind you, when we talk about law, we are talking about principles. Principles that guide the way of life. Alright? Principles that surround the way things are done. You know, there is always ABC things to do to achieve ABC results. Okay? So, ABC things that you need to put in place to achieve ABC D result is what is called what? Principles. So, in other words, the end product of every principle is predictable. Are you following? It's predictable. It is predictable. So, those laws are which are called principles. We have the natural laws and we have what? The spiritual laws. 
The natural laws, for instance, like uh, the law of flotation or Archimedes principle, right? And then we have um, the law of gravity. That when you throw an object up, what happens to that object? It will surely come down. Am I correct? So, you know, that law is constant. And we have so many other natural laws like that. But the man in Christ is not expected to be governed by the natural laws. That is why you could see a Jesus, all right, um, violated the law of flotation and Archimedes principle by walking on water. That is why you could see a Jesus, all right, you know, feeding 5,000 men. That's over 20,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fishes. So he wasn't governed and controlled by the natural laws. Are you following now? Because so now we also have what is called the spiritual laws. Praise God. Romans chapter 8 and in verse 2. Romans chapter 8 and in verse 2. So this morning I'm not going to dwell on the natural laws. I'm going to, of course, dwell more on the spiritual laws. Because we are supernatural people. So we learn of the spirit. <laughs> Praise God. So he said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that made me free from the law of sin and death. Here we see that there are two spiritual laws. We have the law of what? Of the life, right? Of the spirit of life in Christ, isn't it? And we also have the law of sin and death. So these are the two, you know, natural laws or two spiritual laws highlighted in the scriptures highlighted in the word of god now when we talk about the law of sin and death we need to understand how this law came into existence the law of sin and death was never given all right to promote peace the law of sin and death came to instigate fear to instill fear in the heart of men. How did fear came about? You know, in Bible study, there is what is called the law of first mention. Do you understand? So, if you want to study a topic, one of the ways to have precise and accurate knowledge of that topic is by first knowing where it, what happened, where, where, when it was first mentioned. So, for example, when you want to study about love, You've got to know what happened. Where was love first mentioned in the Old Testament? And what did it happen there when God talked about love? Are you getting my point? Then now, if you want to talk about the devil, where was the devil first mentioned? And what did he do? And why was he called the devil? That is how to study Bible. You don't pick the Bible from the middle and start interpreting it. No. You go from the... That's why we have the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis simply means the book of the beginning. Now, there is a law that is at work in us. And there is a law, a, a, a law that is at work, that used to be at work. And this new law came to despair the whole one. He said there is a law which is called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus which is now at work in the man in Christ, okay? And that law despair the law of sin and death. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 and I would like us to read um all right, from verse um, 8 or thereabouts. From verse 8. Genesis chapter 3. Are we there? And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. This Adam and Eve, right? 
and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of what? Of the garden. Now, remember that that guy, initially, God had always been coming in the cool of the day to the garden to fellowship with him. Am I correct? And then on this occasion, the Bible said they began to hide themselves. What happened? Why did they hide themselves? Why didn't they have the same confidence that they, they used to have before, before the Lord? Because what God gave to the man that was created, that is the man called Adam, was faith. Are you following now? But as soon as sin came into the scene, all right, that faith was perverted. Fear simply means a perverted faith. That is what it means. So fear is not the absence of faith. Fear is the presence of a faith that is being what contaminated. He says, so can we read it further? Can we read that scripture? He said, and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. Who told him that he was naked? And if you read that scripture further, can we read it, the next verse? What God even said was, was, was amazing. God was asking, he said, and what's that? Verse 11. All right? And God, this is God now, asking Adam, who told you that thou was naked? What? was not aware that you are naked despite the fact that they sinned you, you see what the devil does so them as soon as fear came into the scene they began to call themselves who they are not they began to see themselves in the light of whom god has not seen them because this is what the devil does to many believers and God began to ask him, Who told thee that thou art naked? And uh, as thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? So God began to ask him. Of course, he, he knew. He's an omnipresence and omniscience God. So he knows all things. Are you getting my point? He knew that definitely that guy had eaten, even before he came to him. He knew that he had taken of that tree. But as far as God is concerned, it was inconsequential. Do, do you understand now? I, oh, I've come across folks who said God cannot forgive them because of the kind of lifestyle they once lived. Can I tell you this morning, as far as God is concerned, he was not aware. He's not, you are the one that is fighting. You allow the devil to do what? To just keep taking advantage of you. The Bible says, for our conscience judges us. We have what? An advocate who is more powerful and stronger than our conscience. So sometimes the devil takes advantage of the man in Christ's conscience. Alright? Then he began to tell him certain stuffs. Making him to believe certain things that are not accurate with the word of God. Yes, are you the first person to commit such sin? Were you the first person to have committed an abortion? Were you the first person to have, you know, route through, you know, that prostitution journey? Were you the first person to have done this, to have done that? Are you getting my point? You were not. But the truth of the matter is that as far as God is concerned, he is not aware. So when that guy, all right, took of the tree and the bible said god came as usual and he became afraid he fled from the presence of god and he said i, I heard thy voice and i was afraid that was the first time in the entire scriptures that that word was used i heard thy voice and, and god was surprised because i was naked he said what who told you that you are naked 
Who told you that you are naked? So uh, the Lord is saying to tell someone this morning, in a sense, who told you that you have not been forgiven? Who told you? Who told you that the reason why you are going through what you are going through is because of the things that you did in the past? Who told you that? Who told you that the reason why you have not conceived was because of the abortion that you did in the past? Who told you that? Who told you that the reason why you are not yet married is because you had multiple boyfriends in the past? Who told you that? Who told you that the reason why you, you are broke today is because of that opportunity that you lost? Who told you that? Because as far as God is concerned, he's not aware. So God began to ask Adam, who told you that you are naked? And Adam said, oh, you now don't know him. Oh, have you partook of the tree? Alright, which I instructed you not to. He said, yes. You see, fear has just one assignment in your life. Which is to take you far away from God. So, Adam, as soon as he partook of the tree, the faith he once had in his heart turned to fear. So, that faith became perverted. Are you getting my point? Can, you, can I tell you this? Sin is not another law. Sin simply means righteousness perverted. So when if you are to if you are to if we are to ask how did sin came about? Sin came through man. How? Because the man who was created righteous and formed righteous, all right, perverted that righteousness. Do you understand? He allowed the devil to pervert it. So same simply means righteousness what perverted. Let me simply say this about the devil, in case you are not aware. John chapter 8 and in verse 44. John chapter 8 and in verse 44, Jesus himself, there is nobody in the entire scripture, even among all the old prophets, including Moses, that was able to, you know, give the redefinition of Satan the devil. The highest that Moses could say about Satan the devil was the fact that it was what? It happened. Genesis chapter 3. Are you getting my point? But Jesus was the first person to call him Satan, to call him devil, to call him the thief, to call him the goat, to call him. Do you understand? He gave he gave a perfect definition of the personality, the traits, the nature, the character of Satan, the devil. So in John chapter eight and in verse four, eight forty four, the Bible says, "Ye of your father, uh, of your father, the devil." This is Jesus speaking, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who was a murderer from the beginning? The devil. So what? Where was he talking about? He was talking about Genesis chapter three. Do you understand? He was a murderer, and what was the trick? And the antics in which he used to kill the man in the garden. It was fear. I heard a voice and I was afraid. Fear. He said he was a murderer from the beginning. Can you put it there? All right. And I bought not in the truth. So in other words, he's a liar. He said because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. So he's a manufacturer of lies. So he is so perfect in manufacturing lies. Do you understand? So he said, when he speaketh of he, he lies, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. He's a liar and the father. Do you know why you say someone is a father? <laughs> it is a, it's the source so anywhere you see lies that is the devil at work anywhere lie is in place the devil is at work so he's a, he's a father of liars he's 
is the source of lies. Is the origin. Is the originator of it. Is the one who manufactured it. But how was he able to trick Adam and Eve? Lies. So true lies, fear came. And so when fear came, there was what? A disconnection from God. So they forgot all the promises of God concerning their lives. They forgot all the, the things, the dominion mandate given to them. They had the mandate, right? And so, what actually disqualified the man was not the sin that he committed, act actually, but the fear that he allowed. So that's why when, when God came, all right, he said, oh, what, who told you that you are what? You are naked. He said, I saw the, I heard thy voice and I was afraid. He said, who told you that you are naked? And from that day forward, from that moment, what happened? There was a separation. Because fear was allowed. God is not, God does not act all the time. He acts only whenever he's pleased. Praise the Lord. And the only thing that pleases him is faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6. He said, for without faith, it is impossible. Can you see that in your Bible? For without faith, it is impossible. To do what? To do what? To please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So God acts whenever he is pleases. Are you getting my point? And you only please God by faith. So God is only pleased in your faith. Praise God. God is only pleased with your faith. Hey, you know, sometimes you go through certain issues and you start crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> God, you know me. Hey, I've been serving you faithfully. Hey, oh, oh God, I'm going through this social situation. I've been going through this challenge. Hey, will, you, will you deliver me? No. That is not how to walk by faith. In fact, when you pray that way, you pray in fear. That is a prayer manufactured by fear. Do you understand? So because your family member, everyone is going through this or so issue. So you are saying, oh Lord, you remember I'm serving you. I'm serving you. I'm serving you. I, I've taught you here that there is a difference between faithfulness and faith. Alright? Faith is required to enjoy victory in Christ on the earth. But faithfulness will be rewarded in heaven. You can be faithful as an usher, be faithful as a cleaner, be faithful as a gardener, be faithful as a driver, be faithful as a chorister. Do you understand? And still be bedeviled and be battered and shattered by Satan the devil. If faith is not in place. Do you understand? So what is required for you to enjoy the life of victory in Christ is not your faithfulness in service, but your faith in Christ. Faith in Christ. Faith in his word. Whatever he says I have, I have. Whoever he says I am, that is who I am. Do you understand? Whatever he says I can be, I can be. So this is what is required. So God acts only whenever he is pleased. And also, God is pleased in faith. Do you understand? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that is a reward of them that he just seeks to him. Hello? Can I say this? Adam did not know how to die. All he knew was how to live until his faith was perverted. Adam did not know how to die. All he knew was how to live until his faith was perverted. So in other words, death came in because his faith was perverted. There are two major things I would like to, to talk to you about this morning about fear. Okay? Fear. Number one, fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. 
Romans chapter 8 and in verse 15. Fear is a spirit. Romans 8 verse 15. Alright? Fear is a spirit. Romans 8 verse 15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of what? Of bondage again to do what? To fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry what? Of course, I've done a thorough teaching on this. The spirit of adoption. Alright? He said, but ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Fear is a spirit. And what does it come to do? It comes to put one in bondage. Hallelujah. It comes to put one in bondage. So fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. First John chapter 4 and in verse 18. What does the spirit of fear really do to people? What does the spirit, what is the assignment of this spirit of fear to people? He said, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out what? Fear. Because fear has what? Fear has what? Fear has what? Fear has what? The word torment is from the Greek word colasis. Which means infliction or punishment. So fear is a punisher. A lot of people are going through what they are going through because they are being punished by fear. Say fear adds torment. Fear has colossus. It has what? Infliction, punishment. You know? few years ago, when this uh, menace was rampant in our nation, HIV AIDS, right? HIV AIDS, you know, some years back, it was like, hey, <laughs> everybody was afraid. Ah, go and do your test, oh, HIV test. I, I had an opportunity to interact with a medical practitioner, and we got talking, and he said, what actually killed people is not the HIV itself. But the fear. He said, there are people that <laughs> have had it even more than 20 something years. And since they were not aware, they were living fine. <laughs> and nothing happened to them until the news <laughs> broke out. Until they conducted it and they discovered that, oh boy, I'm now positive. Do you understand? And then from that day forward, they start living in fear of death. So they become tormented. He said, what literally kills people is not the disease itself, okay, but the torment. That is the fear that it, what, that it promotes. Even during COVID-19. Did you know some people that die of COVID, all right, actually died because of fear. I hope you know that. Some of us contracted COVID now. Some of us contracted COVID Somebody like me, ah, I, I was tested, but I, I didn't go to <laughs> all the symptoms they said, um, uh, no inability to taste, smell, and I had all. My wife, the same thing. <laughs> and we had a little daughter at that time. And what did we, we pray that no, this one, she shielded from that word, those symptoms. And that was exactly what happened. You know, somebody will come and then they will bring ambulance. Pick you to uh, where? Quarant to go and quarantine you and <laughs> do all of that. One day, I woke up in the morning. That thing is a spirit. After some time, everything. Oh. That is the antidote. That's the antidote. That's the antidote. Fear is a spirit and the assignment is to torment. Say, I refuse to be tormented, refuse to be tormented 
by fear. Can you say it again? Say, I refuse to be tormented by fear. Say, I, I refuse to be tormented by fear. Fear robs people of their freedom. It robs people of their freedom. You cannot live in fear, all right, and be free. That's why he said, we are no longer in that what? The spirit of what? Bondage again to fear. Is a bondage. Do you understand? And it's a spirit. And is there someone under the sound of my voice this morning who have been living in perpetual fear? By the authority in the word of God, I command that spirit to get his hands off your life now. I command that spirit to get his hands off your life now. In the name of Jesus. Fear is a door, number two. Fear is a door. Job chapter one, can we read from verse one? Job chapter one, from verse one. Fear is a door. It's a door. This is Job, all right? The powerful man who was the richest among other men. He said that there was a man in the land of Hus, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Now, come go ahead. And there were born unto him how many sons? Seven sons, and how many daughters? Three daughters. Okay. Uh, his substance also was seven thousand sheep. And 3,000 camels and 500 what? Yoke of oxen and 500 she what? Hasses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So he was the richest among all the men of the East. Imagine, let's say somebody is the richest man in Africa. So he, was, he had substance. And can we take it further? And his sons went and feasted in their houses everyone his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them okay and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that job sent and sanctified them why was he doing all of this okay and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all for job said it may be that my sons have sinned and caused god in their heart thus did job continually so why was job doing all of this why was he doing all of this? He would sanctify them, okay? And they offered burnt offerings on the behalf of those guys. According to the number of the children. And he kept doing that consistently. Why was Job doing all of that? Job 32 and in verse 1. Job 32 verse 1. Job 32 verse 1. Can we see why he was doing all of that? Okay. He says, so the three men ceased to answer because he was righteous in his own eye. Okay, the things that I fear had come upon me. That's what I'm looking for. Job is Job 32. Job 32. Job 32. Can you take it further? All right. Right. Job chapter 3. All right, Job chapter 3, verse 25. Job chapter 3, verse 25. Can we, can we take it further? All right. For the things which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is what? Is come unto me. Hey. What was it that he was afraid of? So, in other words, the reason why he was offering the sacrifices was because of fear. He was afraid so that God would not strike them. So, he was afraid so that he would not lose his possessions. Do you understand? He was afraid of, you know, of becoming wretched. You know, the reason why some people go to church is because of fear. Fear of the unknown. I don't know where they are pursuing me again. Father, oh, so when they are shouting, Father, the enemy of my father, you are shouting, Father, fire, fire. Not because <laughs> of anything else, because you are, so, you are just afraid. 
If you ask some people, why do they go to places where they don't teach God's word? They go to places where from morning till night, even if they organize 21 days fasting and prayer, it will be about fire, fall. You know those kind of stuff. You know those kind of prayers. Do you understand? Of course, I don't have anything against that. Do you understand? But, <laughs> you know, it's because of all those kind of places, you, you ask them, they will tell you. They are living in fear. I hope you know that you, are, you can actually pray in fear. I hope you know that. You can actually pray in fear. There is a difference between praying by faith and praying in fear. The difference is the result, the outcome. Because the one who has been praying by faith, you will see it in his life. The one who has been praying in fear, you will see it in his life too. Are you getting my point? That's why you see folks who go to mountains, go to all kinds of places for prayers, and nothing has changed in their lives for years, and they've been on the same issues because they are praying in fear. They are living perpetually in fear. The things which I fear had come upon me. Why did he offer sacrifices unto God? Because he was afraid. He was afraid. So, sometimes, you know, you, you could have thought that Job loved God so much to that extent. That was what was making him to offer sacrifices. Do you understand? But he later confessed by himself that I was afraid, though. <laughs> and what I was afraid of has come. In one day, he lost his 10 children. One day, under 24 hours. Under 24 hours, he lost all the wealth that he worked for. Under 24 hours. Everything that he had labored for all his life, gone on within 24 hours. Are you getting my point? Fear is a door. 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 Hear this. Whatever you fear was not meant to happen. But you granted it permission to happen. Whatever you fear is not meant to happen, but you granted it permission to happen. Every first daughter in my family always find it difficult to get married. Do you understand? It happens to all your uncles. Now you are the first daughter. Who told you that the same thing will happen to you? So because you are the first daughter and you are now 25, or 28 or even 30 <laughs> and all the guys that have been coming around they are the guys with this kind of trousers they are putting their jean here you know those kind of guys hey, yo man how are you alpha on serious they sack their trousers and they come you say i'm a i'm a believer i'm a christian and then so you are not living and you know to make the matter worse the place all the places you have been going to the prayer houses they've been giving you prophecies in that light, remember in your family, some people are after you, they're after your marital destiny. Hey? So, oh Lord, how are they that have, what that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be who say of my soul, there is no hell for me in God. Oh, and you start quoting Psalm 3. Are you getting my point? You are quoting the scripture not because you have faith, but in fear. And can I tell you this? God is only pleased by faith. God is only, there is only one thing that draws the attention of God. It is faith. So you can be praying and be praying and be fasting and be giving. All right? And the reason why you are giving is because you've been taught. Eh? that if you don't give your tithe, you will be broke. So you are, you are afraid of being broke, so you are giving 10% of your income. You can be fasting. The essence of your fast is because you've been told. Do you understand? That if you don't, you are not going to live long. Do you, so the essence of your fasting is because you desire to live long. So you are living, so when you see any, even if it is cobweb like this, you must call the prophet. Man of God, I just saw one cup where, like, he just, the thing just ran like this. What is the meaning, sir? What is the meaning? <laughs> Fear. 
He said, the things which I fear had come upon me. Fear is a door. And this is the, the you know, this is a, the platform through which the devil has been messing up and messing around with the life and destinies of several believers. Hello? Have you seen folks who are afraid of marriages before? Because of what happened in the marriage of their parents. I, I know what marry you. And they are afraid. They are afraid. And eventually when they go, get married, they will divorce. Have you seen folks who are afraid of business losses before? They are always very careful. I, I, no, I heard that other fellow. When he put his money in that, so, so, can I tell you this? Business is a risk. There is no business that is not a risk. If you ask the billionaires of this world today, eh, that what made them billionaires, why, what made them so sure, why did they have confidence that that investment they did was going to turn out that way? They will tell you that they only risk it. Do you understand? It's a risk. And until you start living, you know, out of fear, you see, the devil will keep messing around with you. Fear is a door. Fear is a door. Fear is a door. There are some people that are afraid of traveling by road. Some are afraid of traveling by the water, the sea. Some are afraid of traveling by air. So when they enter the air, they say, no, I can't travel by air. Please give me the money. What is it? I just book a flight ticket for you. Say, no, sorry, please collect it back. I want the money. Send the money to me. <laughs> I will go and enter ABC. Night journey. Uh -huh. That one I can do night bus. Okay, which of the two is more, <laughs> is more dangerous? Night bus? And the one that we just, within 45 minutes, you're already there in Lagos. Do you understand? Which of the two is more, is more dangerous? So there are folks afraid of water. I heard a man some time ago who said, even if he's died, when he dies, if they carry his corpse, across the river that we wake up i was shocked <laughs> he was saying this to my president i was shocked. i looked at him i said sir what did he say ah he said i'm just telling you the way i fear water that if he dies that if they carry his corpse they just say okay we have to cross from this place to the other point he said for <laughs> if they can't he said we wake up <laughs> <We jack up. laughs> let's go fear so fear is it. So those things you are afraid of were never meant to happen. They happen because you allow them. That's why the Bible says, if the hedge be broken, serpent will bite. What hedge is broken? Do you understand? The hedge is broken each time fear is what is accommodated. So you have to make up your mind this morning. I will never be afraid of anything. Never. You know why I'm telling you this? Because in the coming year, there will be news that will get you afraid. Economic news. Alright? Marriage news. I mean, the world will be shaken. There will be natural disasters. There are all kinds of news. That we get to afraid. Do you understand? People you least expected will exit this world and you'll be afraid. Now, hey, this person that I saw yesterday, there will be news that will get you afraid. The intention of the devil for spreading such news is just for you to do, do what? To become afraid. That's why the media of this world has only one thing to promote fear if you live your life perpetually on the media of this world i tell you your faith is going to be ruined because that is the intention their intention is to corrupt your faith so from morning till night you're on social media from morning till night you're on one news to another do you understand that is talking about war, killings of children, killing of that, killing of... Do you understand? You are all, all manner of stuffs. So there are some of us that your mind is so full of this death, this information that you hardly can pray again.
Fear is a doorway. And this is the major weapon that the devil is using in this generation now. It's a major weapon. A major tool in his hand. So whatever you fear was not meant to happen. But you granted it permission to happen. There are two vehicles of fear. 1 John chapter 5 and in verse 18. Two vehicles of fear. Alright? Two vehicles of fear. Halimana fila bahoso pronde para. First John chapter 5, verse 18. He said, We know that whosoever is born of God sinned not. Alright? But he that is begotten, alright, of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one tortured him what? Not. Wait. Whosoever is born of God sinned not. Whatever is not of faith is what? Sin. It is not of faith because it's not in God's word. It may look good or sound good, but for as long as it's contradicting the, God's, the word of God, all right, that is what? A sin. As long as it will not promote your faith, that is a sin. That's why the Bible says, whatsoever is not of faith is what? A sin. And here the Bible is saying that whosoever is born of God. So you are born of God, born of a seed, all right, born of his word. Do you understand? Which is a seed incorruptible. Why have you born of his word? So that you can be a word addict. So that your faith can be boosted. So whosoever is born of God, sin it not. But he that is begotten of God keeps himself. How? He keeps himself from anything that is contradicting to God's word. So he that is born of God keeps himself from anything whatsoever information that, talk, that contradicts the word of God. Do you understand? He said, and that way it is only that one that the wicked one cannot touch. So sin is a vehicle through which fear enters a man's life. So when they sinned in the garden, what happened to them? I was afraid when I heard thy voice because I was naked. It's a fear. It's a, it's a vehicle. He said, we know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. This is New Living Translation. For God's son holds what? Holds them securely. And the evil one cannot touch them. You know, this is uh, not, this is just, is beyond living a lifestyle of sin now. Okay? You know, living a lifestyle, li lifestyle of sin at, in twofold. One, if someone is living perpetually in sin, you know, the literal sin. Do you understand? And also, a man in Christ is sinning if he's living contradicting to the word of God. When you don't abide in God's word, when you do things that contradict the faith, that is a sin. Because the Bible says that what? Whatever is not of faith is sin. Anything outside faith is sin. So God is only pleased by faith. He that comes from him must believe that he, what? he is. Because the only thing that pleases him is faith. So in other words, God is displeased by fear. God is displeased by fear. And the devil is aware of this. So he always what? promotes fear in the heart of God's children. So the wicked one touches not, touch, uh, you know, touches us not in God's word. So if the wicked one ever touches you, it means you are outside the word of God. So the word of God is the boundary of the believer's protection. If you want to keep enjoying protection, divine protection perpetually, then you must be a student of the word. The word of God is our boundary of protection. The word of God is our boundary of protection. In other words, your protection is only guaranteed within the boundaries of God's word. 
So the wicked one cannot touch you because you are a student of the word. The wicked one cannot touch you because you are a doer of the word. The wicked one cannot touch you because you are a preacher of the word. Say, I'm a man of faith. Say, I'm a man of faith. You don't mean what you are saying. Say, I'm a man of faith. The wicked one cannot touch me. Say, I'm a man of faith. The wicked one cannot touch me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, two vehicles of fear. The second one. Information. Romans chapter 12 and in verse 2. That is unrenewed mind. A mind that is not renewed. We accommodate fear. We know Romans chapter 12 verse 2. And be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind, that ye may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And be not conformed to this word. To the word, they want conformity. Conformity. They want you to see things in the light of their sight. Even though they are blind. I hope you know the people of the world are blind. The most pathetic thing, and one thing I found amusing, is the fact that church folks, people in Christ, believers, all right? are already taking the form of the sight of the world. So it is the people of the world that now tells us how to run a church, how to conduct ourselves, and we buy into the idea. If you have not been to a place, eh, whatever story you share about the place, will it be accurate? If you are not in, until you are in Christ, you can't know how we live in Christ. Yes, yes, yes. So there is no one that is of the world that can effectively teach us how to live in Christ if he or she is not in Christ. Because the Bible ex expressly, you know, explicitly told us that the people of the world are blind. And you are the light of the world. You have sight. You can see. You have ears to hear. So you have the ability to understand spiritual things. Do you understand? So how can the people of the world be teaching you the reality of the life of the supernatural? So that's why they said there is no miracle. That's why they said when you share some mega testimonies, they will say, no, that thing is not possible. They are logical about it. You know why? Because they are blind. The things of the spirit is foreign to them because they are foreigners. They don't belong to the realm of the supernatural that we do. And even if some of them are courtists, do you understand? They don't, we don't operate in the same layer because we, we are seated in the place that the Bible says is far above principalities and powers. So the kind of information that you adhere to, that you pay attention to, will either ruin your faith or boost your faith. Sometimes you need to shut down. Shut down your phone. Shut down your television set. Do you understand? There was a day I said, I told my wife, I said, today, no more television in this house. It's been how many years now? Was it two years now? And there has not been television in the house. It was actually intentional. Are you getting my point? Is there anything wrong in watching TV? No. Of course not. 
But certain, you must discipline yourself to a point where you say certain information must not get into me. It is a discipline. You have to cultivate it. Certain information, certain news, certain media, you delete them from your, they will not come up again. You, you won't see them on your, when you go on YouTube or online, you will, they will never be displayed. Do you understand? Whatever is happening there is not your business. Decide. The major weapon through which the devil is damaging the lives of so many people now is fear and how he uses their sight. What you see, what you see, what you see. Philippians chapter 4 and in verse 8, the Bible already told us what to do. What should we do? Instead of, you know, thinking about these informations and accumulating these informations that are unprofitable to your faith. The Bible said, finally, brethren, I hope he's, you know he's talking to you. Whatsoever things are true. Hello? If he talks about whatsoever things are true, I hope you know Jesus already called Satan who? A liar. And the father of what? Stop sharing some WhatsApp uh, stuff. Some informations are false. You know, you hear some, like, the, um, some Yahoo guys just kill somebody and then they will be sharing the picture everywhere, the video everywhere. And by the time you check the information, you discover that that thing had happened maybe 15 or 10 years ago. And it had nothing to do with what they are saying. And you have shared to all your contacts, all your friends, all your social media. Do you understand? Why? Just to, to promote fear in the heart of the people. I can't be a victim of ritualist. You know why? I'm born of the spirit. Yes. And he that is from above is above all. Yes. It, it is not a matter of negotiation. I never thought of it. I can't be a victim of hired assassin. My properties cannot be robbed. You know why? He that is from above is above all. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. So when he talks about whatsoever things are true, he's in essence talking about the word of God here. Forever, O God, thy word is what? Sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is what? Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, whatsoever, if there be virtue, any virtue, and if there be any praise, what does he say you should do? Think on these things. Say meditate on these things. The word thing there means meditate. So, in other words, the Bible is saying meditate on God's word. Instead of giving attention to those media that will pervert your faith, meditate on the word of God. God's word is a faith booster. It's a faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, alright, he said meditate, think on these things. A mind that is not renewed, all right, becomes the battlefield for the devil. So every day is fight. If you are not fighting lust, you are fighting addiction, you are fighting what is it called? Death, spirit of death. You are fighting that one. They are pressing you. You are fighting all kinds of combat because. That is where your mind is always focused. There are two major antidotes, you know, of fear. According to the scriptures, number one is love. 
First John chapter 4, verse 18. We once read it. Number one is love. First John 4, 18. Can we read that again? First John chapter 4, verse 18. He said, There is no fear in love, for perfect love casted out what? Love. Love for God. Love for the things of the Spirit. Love for people. If you genuinely love people, you will not be afraid that somebody is after your life. If you love people, you won't cheat them when both of you do a contract together. Are you getting my point? You will give him his own share. Help you know that the reason why uh, uh, some people are afraid and some people are going about with bodyguards or security personnel is not because of the insecurity issue in the country alone, but because some people's ways are not pure. So they are afraid that somebody from nowhere can just come and gun them down. Because any man who gets his, his income and his profit from ungodly ways is always afraid of death. I hope you know that. Yes, when you do a business with somebody, eh, collect your share, give the person his own share, let the person go. By so doing, you have already what? You'll be a man of peace. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemaker. They shall be called what? The children of God. Every time you do business, everybody knew you as a cheat. You did business with that man? Say yes. So. Ah, why now? You should have told me. You should have told, you should have told me. And then so you keep accum- accumulating enemies. So one day you will do with somebody else who will not forgive you. Because everybody is not the same. There are people that have unforgiving spirits and such that they are so, their own level of unforgiving is until the person goes down. They will not be at rest. I pray for you under the sound of my voice. Everyone under the sound of my voice this morning. May you not encounter such people. Amen. I said may you not encounter such people. Amen. May you not encounter such people. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Love is an antidote to fear. And number two, which is where I'm going to wrap it up. Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. Kalemanamoso prodi baradosa. Reko Soprone Barade Barados Sakatapara. Second Kings chapter six. Can we read from let's read from verse ten? Then we pray. And then the king of the of Israel sent. So the place which the man of God told him and warned him and saved himself there, not once, not twice. This is a certain king had that right, the king of Assyria, planning to waylay the king of Israel. I hope you understand the story, right? And so the Bible said, as he will be planning in his room, Elisha the prophet will know about the plan and then inform the king of Israel. Don't go to this place because King had that. Plan, you know, he has strategized with his men to corner you. And so the Bible said, so the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servant and said unto them, will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Now, and one of his servants said, none my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, Tell the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Can you see that? And he said, can I release this as a word of prophecy to someone? From today, whatever the enemy is planning against you, as they are planning it, it shall be revealed to you. Ah, 
as, as they are planning it, they shall be revealed to you. Amen. As they are planning it, it shall be revealed to you. Amen. As they are planning it, it shall be revealed to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, so the heart of the king of them, and said, go and spy where he is. Okay, wait. That king didn't have sense. Who? A man who, whatever you are planning your bed chamber, will see and know it. You are not asking your men to go and arrest such a man. What, what benefit do you have? What assurance do you have that that which you are planning, no, 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 you are planning against the king or, and he was seeing it, he was hearing it. Now you are planning against him. Who told you that the one you are even planning against him, you will not know? Are you getting my point? And so the Bible said, can we take it for another scripture? And he said, go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. He is in Dothan. Therefore sent he that are horses and chariots and a great horse. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Wait. He answered and said, What? Fear not. Why? Because of the consciousness of he that was with him. The consciousness of he that is with you, alright, is enough for you not to exercise fear when you go through certain issues. This man was to be arrested. The intention of the king was to get him killed. Even at that, what happened? He was never bothered. Why was he not bothered? Because they that were with us are more than they that what? That came to arrest us. He said, and he answered, fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So when you hear that one naira, one dollar is now 1,500 naira. Or 1,800 in 2024. Fear not. You know why? They that be with you are more than they that be against you. When you hear the unfortunate situations are happening here and there, even to some certain people that you, won't, you once knew, are you getting my point? Fear not. Because they that be with you are more than they that be against you. When people are saying there is a casting down and all over the places, everybody seems to be saying the same thing. The economy he had. There is a casting down here. You know, I just lost my job. I just lost my marriage. I just lost my this. I just lost my that. Do you understand? I just lost this. I just lost promotion. I just lost that. Fear not. They that be with you are more than they that be against you. So, certain informations are, are there to pervert your faith. You must resist it. The Bible says, resist the devil. And what will he do? He will free from you. The only one thing the devil is not permitted to do is to resist your faith. He doesn't have the power and the authority to do that. Because when you are operating in faith, you are operating in the realm of God. The forces of heaven and hell cannot resist you. Yes. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. So, I don't have money to do this because this, because that. My friend, jump into the water. Oh, yeah. Diving. The money will show. Mm. Ha, the reason why I didn't, I, I, that admission, I, I didn't go to, you know, I, I couldn't for, uh, uh, continue. It's because of the money, it's because of this. My friend, jump in. Jump in. Pick up the phone. 
Write the exam. Apply for the visa. By faith, the money will show up. Yes, when you get the visa, the ticket money will show up. Yes. I don't know anybody there. Uh, uh, what if I get there? What, what, what is wrong? My friend, jump in. I've heard stories upon stories about all people, the people in the past that did this, that did that, and it didn't work out, and they, you are not them. They that be with you are more than they that be against you. Are you getting my point? And wait, what happened? Can we read that scripture for that? What did Elisha's servant saw? I, I wanted to see. Uh, all right, can we see verse 17? And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Remember, I've taught you before that the realm of faith is the realm of sight. Faith is sight, superimposing a sight. Oh, he said, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of what? Horses and chariots of fire. Round about Elisha. Look at what that young man could not see. And he saw. And what, what happened to that guy's confidence afterward? Okay, the next verse. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness. The moment the guy saw his confidence, bam, his faith was boosted. Do you know why you've got to be a student of God's word? The word of God, the revelation of God's word is a faith booster. Are you getting my point? So when every other person is going this way, you are going this way. You know why you are going this way? You are not going this way because you want to be different. You are not going different because this way because you want to sound different. You are not going this way because you are going this way because of what you saw. Everybody is jackpot. You say, I'm not. I say, oh boy, your destiny, your life, your future. You say, I'm not going anywhere. They say, why? Because I saw. Psalm 24, verse 1. He said, the earth is the Lord and the fool, including Nigeria. And they that dwell therein. Uh -uh, the earth is mine. So I prosper wherever I, I dwell. He said, wherever I shall tread with the sole of my feet. He didn't say he's going to give it to me. He said it has been given to me. So I, I, I can't fail. There is no doubt in my heart. Because I know I'm a success. I will succeed. Yay. I know the one that is with me and that is in me. Yeah. In fact, the Bible went further to call him greater. He said it is greater, 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 greater. He see that is in me than he that is in the world. So when there is trouble, when there is economic crisis, when there are sicknesses and diseases, when there are certain turbulences out there, I cannot be afraid. Hey. Let's be on our feet. I cannot be afraid. I cannot be afraid. No matter who is hurt, no matter who is lost, no matter who is going through certain situations, no matter who is troubled around me, are you getting my point? No matter who is caused, no matter who is under demonic and satanic manipulations, do you know why? I cannot be afraid. Do you know why I can't be afraid? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Do you understand? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. I know the one that is with me. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you understand? Come rain, come sun, he is with me. He won't leave me. He will not forsake me. So I know I cannot be forsaken. I can't be left in penury, in poverty. I cannot. I cannot be abandoned. Yes. Are you getting my... He's a mighty-breasted one. That's what the Bible calls him. A mighty-breasted. A mighty-breasted. A mighty... Do you understand? Yes. So this morning, 
I come against every spirit of fear in your life. Anywhere you have been afflicted. The Lord said to me that the reason why some of you are stagnated is because you are afraid, because of fear. There is fear for the future. Fear of what if this thing did not work out. God is saying, I should tell you, it will work out. Step out. Step out. It will work out. What if it didn't work out? What, what if it turned out this way? It won't turn out any bad way. Do you understand? It won't turn out any bad way. Don't even think twice about that. It won't turn out any bad way. It will not. What, 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 what if? What if? What if? No, kill that if. 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 No, not if. It is when. Do you understand? When I buy my car, not if I buy. If I'm promoted, not if. It is when I'm promoted. Are you getting my point? Because that's a statement of assurance. That's the statement of a man in faith. So you walk by faith and not by sight. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. We are not being controlled by the things that we see. Because we know that there is a realm beyond the natural realm. That we are we superimpose things to the right natural. Do you understand? So we see things from there. We draw strength from there. We draw energy from there. We draw capacity from there. We draw capabilities from there. Do you understand? We draw success from there. We draw results from there. And we superimpose it in the realm of the natural. So whatever has not been working in your life before, by the authority of heaven, this money they begin to work. This morning they start walking. Yeah. 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 This morning, are you been going through any form of fear? Maybe in your in marriage, in any part of your life. Now judge that fear. Now judge it. Judge it. I'm giving you just a few seconds. Judge it. Declare judgment upon it.